Well, NASDAQ has board diversity rules in place that the National Center for Public Policy Research says are unconstitutional, and they have filed a lawsuit. To talk more about this is Scott Shepard. He's a fellow at the National Center as well as the director of the National Center's Free Enterprise Project. Scott, thanks so much for being here. Thanks so much for having me today. Yes, um, tell us what's going on at NASDAQ. Yeah, uh, the, the NASDAQ, of course, it's a, a stock exchange. And what it's done is uh, established a rule that's been blessed by the SEC that's, that gives uh, companies on the exchange two bad and unconstitutional choices. Either they have to discriminate on the basis of race, sex, and orientation until they hit the, uh, the minimum quota for uh, race, sex, and orientation on their boards required by NASDAQ, or they can send a little uh, a permission slip, as it were, and a little explanation to NASDAQ explaining why they haven't followed NASDAQ and illegally and unconstitutionally used those factors in deciding who should be on their, their board of directors. As it turns out, both of those activities are both illegal and unconstitutional, especially for, um, for state actors to undertake. And um, and so what the NASDAQ has required is illegal and unconstitutional. What the SEC has blessed and approved is illegal and unconstitutional. And uh, aside from that, also completely violates the SEC statutory remit and NASDAQ's authority under the Securities Exchange Act. Scott, are these just American companies? What about foreign companies? Are they required to do the same thing? Well, not if they're not listed on the NASDAQ. This would just apply to companies listed on the NASDAQ. So uh, at least as far as I know, you don't have to be physically located in the United States to, to trade on the NASDAQ, but, um, but it'll primarily affect American companies. So all companies who, is this for new companies or companies that are already on NASDAQ, do they get grandfathered in and they don't have to follow the same rules? No, nope, the same rules will apply to ones that have been there for, for many, many years and have relied on being there to, uh, to build up significant market share. That market share would be at risk if this rule were not uh, struck down by the courts and therefore these companies faced, faced these unconstitutional uh, uh, conditional uh, demands. Is there any evidence that companies that actually do this, put this in place, these policies, they actually do better? No, no, there's lots of evidence to suggest that diversity viewpoint, which is uh, uh, viewpoint diversity, which is not something that the NASDAQ seems to care about and that the SEC, as you can tell from Gary Gensler's mm -hmm. stewardship there, positively deplores if it helps to, to have conservatives and, and, and centrists on boards of directors. Um, that affects uh, company outcome. Obviously, not being in an echo chamber, having uh, decisions uh, considered but from all sorts of angles, all sorts of viewpoints to see where the the pitfalls lay. That really is good for companies. But there are just about no um, studies that are controlled um, so that you're not getting uh, effects for the uh, the industries that are covered or from the period, et cetera. There really are no controlled studies that indicate that diversity by race, sex, and particularly orientation have any effect on a company's um, a company's uh, uh, output and productivity. Now, all that said, there's nothing wrong uh, with diversity of of uh, on boards of directors or within um, employee pools. There's nothing wrong with inclusion. It's wonderful, but it's illegal to pick employees for for hire or promotion or any other purpose on the basis of race, sex, and orientation. And reintroducing at law systemic racism is wrong and will not solve any lingering uh, background uh, discrimination problems that this country faces. Scott, where does this lawsuit stand right now as far as NASDAQ is concerned? And you guys also have another one against Starbucks. What's happening there as well? I know this is a two part question. Uh, that's right. The, uh, the NASDAQ suit was just heard, oral argument was heard last Monday. Uh, before the Fifth Circuit Court of Appeals in New Orleans. Then we have another case, it's in Washington State Court, at least it's starting there, against Starbucks, because Starbucks is doing the same sort of race uh, and ethnicity discrimination. It has set quotas for the number of um, racially and ethnic, di ethnically diverse uh, employees that it, it cares to have, which in effect also sets a maximum level of white employees that it's willing to have. It then provides dashboards to all of its uh, executives and managers in a hiring capacity to let them know the race and ethnicity of all the people uh, who report to them. 
And then it provides compensation so that uh, those executives and managers will hit the quotas that Starbucks has established, which is to say, because this is the only uh, this is the only uh, lever that these uh, executives and managers have, that they will take race, sex, and orientation into account every hiring decision they make until they hit those quotas and cap the number of, of white employees that they have. And that's just, that's just facially unconstitutional. It's illegal. It has been for a very long time. And, uh, and we're astonished that Starbucks and so many other publicly traded companies have taken on this systemic racism in 2022. Well, what, what happened to Merit, right? Is, is, this is, many would say, reverse discrimination. Yeah, yeah, that's it. Well, it's just discrimination. There's mm -hmm. no reverse about it. Everybody not only has civil rights, every American not only has civil rights, but the same civil rights. And those civil rights include, it, include the right not to be discriminated in hiring or promotion on the basis of one's race or um, and this is happening at other companies and, and at the NASDAQ, sex or orientation. It's appalling that companies are taking this up. It's appalling that law firms are, are uh, giving cover for this. Starbucks added to its website after our demand letter that the Washington, D.C. firm of Covington and Burling has blessed this discrimination. Well, it turns out that you can't discriminate even if you label it in the name of diversity and you can't discriminate even if left-wing D.C. law firms uh, bless it for you. Yeah. Scott Shepard with the National Center for Public Policy Research. Please keep us posted on both of these lawsuits. Will do. Thank you so much. Thank you.